Welcome to Everything Distributed. Today, we are continuing on the topic of consensus, and we still focus on crush failure and asynchronous system. And the new angle is the randomization trick. So, if you remember, we still need to get past this uh, FLP impossibility result. And last time we talked about that, okay, we need to relax our model in order to circumvent the impossibility. And last time we talked about the approximate consensus. And now we are going to focus on the other one, which is called randomized consensus, which in which we are going to relax our termination property. So originally we have the deterministic termination property, but now we are going to say that, okay, I cannot do deterministic one, that's fine. I'm going to have a probabilistic one. And that's so-called randomized consensus. Let me remind you on the definition for exact consensus is termination, agreement, validity. And now we are back to the exact thing because we want everyone to agree on the same output, exactly the same, okay? And what is randomized consensus? So we are going to relax the termination property. So now it's a terminate with probability one. What does that mean mathematically? That means that typically this kind of randomized consensus protocol, it proceeds in phases. And as you go on, go on and on, the number of phases increases, the probability of termination approaches to one. So it's similar to the convergence or approximate agreement that we saw last time, is that if like, the number of phases goes to infinity, then you are guaranteed to terminate. But in the worst case, there's always some probability that you might not terminate then if that like, you don't run for it now, okay? And then similar to the approximate consensus problem we saw, we also need to have n greater than 2f plus. n is strictly greater than 2f, where f is the number, the upper bound on the number of 40 nodes in the system, okay? And the algorithm that we are going to present is called Ben Orr's algorithm because it was proposed by Michael Ben Orr back in Posse 1983. And the exact presentation actually is based on Jen's very nice survey, which is a randomized protocol for asynchronous consensus. Okay. And the key thing to remember, actually the key thing to first to understand is that the, this algorithm can only solve for binary consensus, meaning that the input xi given to each node i is only the binary value, okay? So you have that two variables to keep track of. First is the state for each node, and at all times state is either zero or one because we are dealing with the binary thing. And then we also have the phase. So remember last time that I talk, told you that this kind of consensus algorithm proceed in phases or proceed in rounds. So as phase go on and on, you, you have a more and more phases, it's more and more likely that you are going to terminate. And in the presentation, each phase has a two rounds. So the first round, you send this message to all the other nodes, including yourself. And then this message has a tag, state, okay? And then you include the faces, P, and then you include your state value, which is either zero or one. So you send to O, then you just busy waiting until you have collected it, you have collected enough message from the same round, face P here, face P message. And then if you remember from last time, I told you that we are going to see this N minus F thing again. And then that's the key thing, okay? You need to receive that many of message to ensure correctness. And because that the, the upper bound of a number of 40 nodes is F, so it's guaranteed that you can receive that many message. Okay, so once you collect enough message, you go on and then you have an if statement. You check all the message and you want to find out that for if there's any particular value V, 
where v is either 0 or 1, to appear in the, at least n over 2 plus 1 times in all the phase p message you have received. Okay, so that's the first threshold. If you can find such v, then you update your vote for the second rung as a v. If you don't find that many value v, then you just say, okay, I don't know, I give up my vote, and then now the vote is at a question mark. Okay. So before entering rung two, vote is well defined. It's either v, some value zero or one, or a question mark. And now you go to round two. You want to exchange your vote. So the message has a tag, vote. And then you also need to specify that it's for phase P. Then you just exchange vote to all the other nodes. You also need to send to yourself. And then again, we are going to wait at least M minus F of a phase P messages. Once you receive that, then again, you have this if statement. You check all the message that you have received. If there's a value V appear that at least F plus one time. So now we are seeing the second threshold, which is different from the previous one, which is N over two plus one. And then that turns out to be the key of the correctness. And then if you see something that appears F plus one times, then you are going to output V, okay? Where V is like some zero or one. And then otherwise that you check if there's a value B appear at least once, then you are going to update the state for the next phase to be B. And now where's the randomization trick is this one. At line number 10, you said that I don't see something appear at least F plus one times. So I don't see something appear at least once then you are going to do a conflict. It's either zero or one, and then it's a uniform random. So both the like head and tail, both zero and one has equal probability, okay? So that's the state of your next phase. So in round two, there's only three possibility. First is that you have seen enough, then you can output, which is a line 15. And then the second is that there are tons of questions marked in the message that you have received. Then you say, I've done. Then you, if you see at least one, either zero or one, then you are going to update your state to B. Then finally is that if everything you see is question mark, then you are going to do a coin flip. Okay. Then you increment your face and then you do a while loop again and proceed with like all the uh, all the steps in the next phase, okay? So the algorithm is actually very simple, but in order to prove correctness, it's actually not subtle. Oh, sorry, it's actually pretty subtle. But uh, here, make sure that you understand every step, otherwise uh, you will get really confused. So you want to know that what is question mark? Question mark is something other than zero and one, okay? Then you also want to make sure that, okay, when I see something that appear F plus one times, is it possible for the other person also see another value? Suppose I see zero to appear F plus one time, is it possible for the other to see one to appear at least F plus one time? Okay, so all this kind of detail is very, very important if you, un you, if you want to understand the algorithm, okay? So now let's proceed to the next for the correctness proof, okay? And then the key lemmas that we want to prove, the first one is agreement. Agreement turned out is very simple. The way we state it or the lemma that you need is that if any of the nodes that can output something that can decide on the output V, where V is either zero or one, then any other nodes must also decide output V, okay? And the proof is a bit subtle. So you need to understand that, okay, now somebody can output here. So that must mean that suppose 
this norm of zero because it sees zero appear f plus one time. Then the first thing you want to show is that it's impossible for one to appear f plus one time. And then the second thing you want to show is that because the i can or this node can see one, zero to appear f plus one time, it must mean that all the other norm either output v or they go to this if statement. Because if they go to this if statement, at the beginning of the next round, everybody will have the same state. Okay, so that's how you prove the first lemma. And then the second lemma actually is a simpler, is that if every node have the same input v, then v will be the output, okay? And then if you go back to the algorithm, it's a very simple argument because of uh, the, the number of message that you are going to wait and then the, all the threshold, okay? And I think the, the most important or the key observation back in Ben Orr's paper is this randomized termination. So now let's define the event, some lucky event, meaning that the, each node will flip to the same side of the coin. So now the idea of this termination is that to assume that nobody terminates because as we saw in the lemma before, if someone some know, somehow terminate, then in the very next phase, everybody else will terminate. And then the way to prove randomized termination is to start from that kind of proof by contradiction to say that what happens if that someone cannot terminate? Then under the case, what is the event that can lead to everyone to terminate? And then that way is by this kind of lucky event, okay? Meaning that when everybody do the coin flip, everybody will see the head. So because a head and tail both will appear with a probability one half. So what is the probability of lucky event? And that's a one over two to the power of n, because everybody need to flip to the same side. And by the simple probabilist, uh, probability uh, definition, we know that there's no lucky event, is that at least one minus one over two to the power of n, okay? Then if you want to say that, okay, if the, this ben algorithm cannot terminate in the first k rounds, this probability must be upper bound by this equation because just take this known lucky event to the power of k. Okay. Then once you have this, if you are rusty on math, you may say, okay, this doesn't make sense. I, how can I bound this? But if you remember on some of the nice pro, uh, number is that we can, uh, we, we, we can, this, this is actually the definition of you can bound it by natural number, okay? So suppose k is some constant times a two to the power of n. Then the probability of a lucky event in the first k rung is that one minus this thing, and then you just plug in c to the power, uh, c times to the power of n in, and then you will find out that thing is actually the definition of like, one over e to the power of c, okay? And then because e is something greater than one, so eventually the second term, one over e to the power of c, will approach to zero as that the c becomes larger and larger, and then that's how you get randomized termination. Okay, so that's uh, all about, uh, that's everything I want to talk about Benno's algorithm, including the correctness proof. <clears throat> you might say, okay, that's pretty good. Can we really use it in practice? And then there are some practical concerns. The first one is that because of this randomized trick, performance number of wrong is actually not predictable. And then in many cases, if you look at our analysis, it's actually very big bad because it's exponential in the number of runs that it takes. Then next time we are going to discuss Pexos. It's one of the most used or most popular consensus protocol in this field. 
and then Benor is certainly not as fast as Pexos because Pexos, in the good case, it can terminate in one run. Okay. And then we also like, if you remember from Benos algorithm, every time when we send a message, we need to send it to everyone else. And then it's all to all communication. So amount of communication needed is actually pretty high if you are unlucky for a long time. So as the way Benos algorithm is presented, it's not practical. And however, randomized consensus, some form of randomized consensus is actually pretty popular nowadays. And then later on, I will talk about that. So there are again, three takeaways. We talk about randomized consensus and I present Benos algorithm. And then we have this N minus F threshold again, but we also see some other things. For example, the M over two plus one and then also the F plus one threshold. And then we will see this kind of threshold again and again in this kind of full tolerant design, a full tolerant algorithm. And then finally, we also see that how do we analyze the probability of a termination, meaning that we can use that kind of probability and then this E to the natural number E to analyze, to, to bound the number of runs that we need to terminate. Okay, that's all today. Thank you.